Lesson 14, scoring off the court. Mental preparation and basketball slash life balance are essential to scoring points consistently year after year. Every basketball player must prioritize his life. It's up to you to find your balance and priorities. As I was coming up as a preteen in New Jersey, I witnessed many talented players waste their God-given ability on lack of focus and balance. What I found out was that their off-the-court issues translated into negative and inconsistent results on the floor. That was when I decided that if I was going to get a scholarship and play at a high level, I had better set some rules and parameters. My priorities were simple. God, family, school, and then basketball. My faith in God as a Christian gave me purpose and made me realize that everything I accomplish is a glory to God. When you really look at it, no one has control over the talents that God gives him or her. We all just play the hand that's dealt and try to win at the game of life. I always remember that the Lord can give you something and that he can also take it away. Case in point, my eventual career and an ankle injury that I sustained soon after my senior year was over. Here I am on the top of the world. I led my area in scoring. I made the North-South New Jersey All-Star Game, and I was receiving tons of attention from Division I schools. With one twist of the ankle, I found myself on the floor almost in tears, hoping I just didn't ruin my chances of playing at the school of my choice. What God was saying to me was that I'm to keep him first. Many players lose their character because of the hype and attention that you get when you're a basketball star. They don't understand that you have to take everything with a grain of salt because it can all be over in seconds. At the tender age of 12, I made Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior, and I never looked back. He is the true gift to the world, and I'm glad that I'm able to take his principles as my priority. My family was second on the list. My mother taught me at a young age to never give up and to always finish what I started. When I was eight, my mother asked me if I wanted to play football. Being the average eight-year-old who knows absolutely nothing about what he wants to do in life, I took the easy route and said no. The next week, my mother dropped me off at football practice, and I found myself in line to receive my helmet and shoulder pads. When I came home, my mother told me that I was going to play football and finish the year. If I didn't like it, then fine. But whatever happened, I couldn't quit. I had to finish the season. The season turned out to be a success as I fell in love with playing football. When basketball season came around, she asked me if I wanted to play it, and I said, no, I'm a football player. The next day, I had on a t-shirt and shorts learning how to shoot the basketball. I was fortunate enough that I was the best player on my basketball team, and I used the aggression that I learned during football. You probably can guess what happened when baseball season came around. The lesson that my mother was teaching me is that I have to try new things, I have to learn how to master them, and I have to finish. So this is a philosophy that I actually use every day. Any social media post you see me write, it'll always end with God first, work until. These lessons that I learned at the age of eight were key to my success in high school and college. My mother laid the foundation and supported me my whole career. She was the first to instill the character traits that allowed me to honor God, my family, and my teammates. Being that I was a captain on almost every team I played for, her lessons prepared me for leadership. I grew up thinking that losing was quitting, and that was not an option for me. I look at my team as my family, and to this day, I use that same philosophy as a coach and skills trainer. School was third because without good grades, they wouldn't allow you to play. I always took pride in my schoolwork because I knew how disappointing it would be to sit out because of lack of focus in the classroom. I knew of a couple of players who were still allowed to be around the team, and you could tell that watching the game without playing was just eating them up. Most of them ended up getting serious about their academics in order to get back on the floor. Having good grades also says a lot about a person's discipline and character. It says that you're willing to do what it takes to go beyond just being average. Even if you're not the sharpest pencil in the box, if you work hard, it will be rewarded. One thing I found out is that most teachers are people just like you. If you come to them after school and go the extra mile, very few will fail you. I stayed on the honor roll most of my school days because if I was ever having a problem in the subject, I would go to the teacher after class 
and ask if there was extra credit or anything I can do to boost my grade. Most teachers can appreciate a hard work ethic and will actually provide you what you need to get an A in that class. Even though basketball was a significant part of my life, it was fourth on the list. When basketball becomes first on your list, you're setting yourself up for a disaster. If you put it before God, you're neglecting the one who gave you the ability to play. If you put basketball before God, you're neglecting the one who gave you the ability to play in the first place. If you put it before your family, you dismiss the responsibilities and duties you have to help your own people. If you place basketball before school, then you will soon get a notice that you're ineligible for competition and you'll never hit the floor. However you choose to balance and prioritize your life off the floor, make sure that basketball is not number one. If you don't know where to start, then ask for help. There are always mentors, teachers, coaches, and ex-basketball players that are willing to share their knowledge and experience. I encourage you to take the time to write your priorities and find a mentor. Coach Godwin's Tips, Lesson 14. Focus on balancing your life. Prioritize your life. Don't let your off-the-court problems affect your play on the court. And always keep God first and work until you master your craft.